Hello, BookTube. I have another starter kit for you. This one was suggested to me uh, by someone. I'm having trouble remembering her name. Perhaps I'd be more inclined to remember it if she and her hubs would come to visit. <laughs> In any case, this is a starter kit on birds, on books about birds. And it is an enormous subject, and there's a reason for that. Because birds delight. <laughs> There's no simpler way to put it. They delight. They make you catch your breath. They arrest your attention. They are endlessly beautiful and endlessly interesting. And they always have been. Some of the earliest literature that we have mentions birds reflexively as a, as a, a very important part of the world of the writer. And uh, so a starter kit is going to be tough. There really aren't, if I, if I stick to 10 books, there really aren't 10 books that you could call a place to start with birds, especially since there are three kinds, I think, three main categories of books about birds. Uh, the first is getting to know them, an introduction just to the birds of the world and what they are and what they're like and where they came from and what they do. The second, uh, which I think is probably my favorite of the three, is uh, a more personal account. Uh, if the first one is introducing birds, the second one would be really getting to know them, and taking them more on the level of personality and art and intimacy uh, as shared experience living beings, <laughs> as a tedious friend of mine once put it. Uh, that's an enormous, enormous body of literature. And then the third body of literature, uh, I think you could easily as describe it as just this, for the for the book to step back and marvel at birds. Because they really do evoke marvel. If you ever watched a 500,000 strong starling swarm in the sky, every single bird a quarter of an inch away from all their birds on all sides, but never more or less than a quarter of an inch away, despite the fact that they're in constant undulating motion, just astonishing. <laughs> just astonishing if you've ever seen an albatross on the open ocean. Uh, when you are yourself so far away from land by by, you know, steam-powered locomotion. You are an enormous distance away from any kind of land, and there's this bird skimming along the water. Or, uh, you know, a million other examples where they show up when you least expect them, and they're everywhere in profusion. Um, there's a market, in other words, a, a sweet tooth for books that simply marvel at birds. And I have books here. I have ten books here that I want to sort of touch on each of those categories. Uh, this is not, it's a, it'll be a different kind of starter kit because there's no wrong way to, to get started reading about birds. And each one of these three categories could have 300 starter titles of its own. <laughs> so uh, the first two that we're going to do are from the first category, just introducing you to birds. And you're going to notice something about them, and there's a reason for that. The, the, some of the best, in my opinion, some of the best introductions to birds are for kids. They, they, because the central binding element of adult fascination with birds and child fascination with birds is exactly the same, that sense of wonder. That sense of having your breath taken away, that sense of simply being fascinated by these things. Uh, so the two books that I have are kids' books. And I could add a lot more. Like, for instance, The Little Golden Book, which sold The Little Golden Book on birds... Uh, I must have a copy here in the room somewhere. Well, The Little Golden Book on Birds uh, has sold more copies than all of these books put together. <laughs> Probably more copies than any, all of all book, bird books put together. I could easily include that. That is also a, just a handy-dandy, simple field guide to about three dozen species of birds. Uh, and I could also include the Sibley Guide to birds, both the guide to birds and also the guide to bird behavior. Those are two larger plastic uh, laminated cover type volumes that are indispensable. They're incredibly good, even if you never set foot in a marsh or more. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the two that I have in mind, there's, they're both old. They're both out of print. So th that betrays right away that this is the normal starter kit because you can't go out and get these things. You have to be lucky enough to find them. The first one is a How and Why Wonder Book. I have a few of these. The one for animals is incredible. But this is the one for birds. Uh, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. See, that's the list of all the ones they have. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about, where 
you get a very simple introduction uh, with very simple descriptions of, of uh, where birds came from, where they live in the world, what their uh, anatomy is like, made for the, the, the easiest of readers. Uh, and this, this is comparatively recent. This next one is uh, less visual and more verbal, but still made for grade school kids, at least grade school kids of a previous era. <laughs> and this is, this is this. The birds are yours. Uh, and this is by Robert Lennon and Don Eckleberry, and it has uh, just individual chapters on different aspects of bird life. They're flying, they're mating, they're child-rearing, uh, all accompanied by these wonderful black-and-white illustrations. I found this at a thrift shop in Vermont. This, this series, this was part of a nature series. It wasn't all about birds. This was the volume about birds, and like, like it with every nature series, the volume about birds always outsells all the others by a factor of 50. <laughs> That's part of what I'm talking about. The, the, there's, you can bank on that sense of wonder, that sense of immediate connection. Everybody feels it. Uh, even if they don't go out with binoculars and a life list, they still feel it. Everybody feels it. Everybody at some point or other has marveled at a bird. Uh, so the next uh, four that I want to show you are... Uh, the second category, which is investigating birds, the, a more personal, a deeper connection to them, which can span the spectrum from, uh, as, you, as you'll see, it can span the spectrum from, you know, totally impressionistic first-hand accounts of bonding with a particular bird, books like Owl by William Service or Arnie the Darling Starling, two classics of the kind, but there are many others. It, it, it can span from there to all the scientific literature, which is also trying to lift the curtain on bird mysteries and get to know what they are. Uh, and the first one that I want to show along those lines is the first kind. It's extremely impressionistic. This is My Robin by Frances Hodgson Burnett, whom some of you will know as the author of Little Women. <laughs> and this is just a story about a robin in her garden. Uh, just a little impressionistic book about uh, a robin in her garden whom she gets to know. Uh, and it's utterly delightful. I didn't pick it because it's the best example. I picked it because many, many examples will be like that. And I thought you'd heard enough about how Owl by William Service for me, so I didn't put that on this list. But that's because this isn't a normal starter kit. If this were a normal starter kit, I would probably have gone to the very best ten books, but there's no way to do it. It's an ocean. <laughs> uh, then the next one is... Uh, quasi-fiction. <laughs> Maybe fiction. This is by Farley Moat. Some of you will know Farley Moat from his million other books, but not ever, not ever knows this book. This is a favorite of mine. This is Owls in the Family, uh, a story also illustrated of uh, of his childhood, uh, of an incident in his childhood where he found boys tormenting two little owls and decided to adopt them. <laughs> one, one is big and imperious, the other is slightly smaller and slightly more of a lieutenant, and they have all sorts of adventures. And the, the book is all about those adventures. Uh, and they're, see, there they are, there are two owls. And they are delightful. This is, these are absolutely delightful stories. And then we get to our Farley Moet's final note in the book. Uh, after uh, the owls and the boys have parted ways, uh, he writes, uh, were Wall and Weeps real owls? Of course they were. And Mutt and Rex and Murray and Bruce and I were real. And if you should happen to be going to Saskatoon in the spring of the year, and if you should happen to take a walk across the prairie, it wouldn't surprise me in the least if you happen to meet some of us. And if it's a big white owl and a not-so-big brown owl that you meet, uh, give them my love, will you? Yeah, see, because that's uh, the nature of these books is always that the birds go their own way. And this is... Oh, just, just delightful. <laughs> just no idea if Owls in the Family is still in print, but I have given away so many copies of this book over the years. Uh, then this next one, we're moving along a gradient here. So we we started off with impressionistic stuff, and now we're moving closer to science. It's still a nuts and bolts investigation of details. So it still it still fits in this category. And this next one is by an author that uh, you've seen on this channel many times. This is Bern Heinrich, who did a book much closer to. Uh, the first part of the spectrum called One Man's Owl about his experiences 
getting to know one particular great horned owl. This book is closer towards the other end of the spectrum. This is his masterpiece, Ravens in Winter. All about, it starts out with examining what these birds do during the winter, which in some parts of the area of the, of the world where Heinrich goes is crushing, but he doesn't crush them. They love it. <laughs> and he, he's able to investigate them. Uh, and they don't seem to mind. <laughs> and uh, the result is just amazing. It's just a classic work of natural history. So it, it, uh, it counts as we move closer towards that end of the spectrum, and then all the way to the end of that spectrum, still in the middle category of getting to know the details of birds, uh, would be a scientific study. And this is, again, a book we've seen on this channel before. I've, uh, I was waiting. to s I got it in the mail from the publisher years ago. And then I was wait. I got rid of it, and I was waiting to find it again, and I did. It's the the singing life of birds by Donald Kruzma, and it includes a, a CD in the back. And this is a, a a richly detailed study, sonics and everything, of the thing that we the signature thing aside from flight that we associate with birds, which is that they like us, are extremely vocal, endlessly vocal, uh, and. The, the old ideas that birds sing for joy or for love or to find a mate are, of course, very simple. There's a lot more going on than that, and this book delves into it in great detail. It's, and and Kruzma is a really good writer, so it isn't just a dry monograph on the acoustic world of birds. Instead, it's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, and that, that brings us to the final category, <laughs> which is just simply marveling at birds. And... There has always been a market for such books, always, even in the Middle Ages. Uh, but as you could probably guess, it was with the the real boom in cheap printing presses and uh, photographic reproduction, larger size books, a, a gigantic increase in the book buying section of the public, that all of a sudden the technology caught up with the desire of these things, and suddenly you could marvel in the pages as opposed to just the writer doing his best to, to transcribe things in words. <laughs> uh, and so you're going to see that in these books. The first one is older. Uh, but I guess what I'm trying to say is this, that the third category here of bird books, books that simply marvel at birds, simply stand back and let you marvel at them, was kind of waiting for the book industry to catch up with the ability to do that on the printed page. And all four of these do. And I, I, want to, I want to show... The first one is kind of old, and it has a lot of written material. It's not just marveling. It, you could easily... It is a kind of a bridge between the middle category and this third category. And it's this. Birds in our lives. It's a gigantic thing from uh, the United States Department of the Interior. Uh, and it's... This is old. I, I found a battered copy of the Brattle. And, uh, but this has everything that you would ever want. This has... Birds in art, birds in coins, birds on all parts of the world, uh, birds in the wild, birds domesticated, hunting birds, keeping birds as pets, keeping birds as food, uh, just every single aspect of birds in our lives uh, in between two covers. And this was a hit. <laughs> this book was a hit. I'm trying to remember uh, when this came out. See that? Look at that. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember when this came. Yeah, 1966. Uh, it was $9 at the time, which was a, a large amount of money for a book, and it was a hit. It was a much bigger hit than the Department of the Interior and any of the subsidiary publishers were thinking that it would be. <laughs> and it showed what I've been talking about, which is that you will never go wrong anticipating that there's a huge reading audience out there for anything bird-related because they are elementarily fascinating. We have always been fascinated, and we can't get enough about them, even if you're not a birder. And this has everything in it. I, I uh, go back to this thing over and over again. Uh, but even even here, you have you have lots and lots of illustrations, but they are black and white, uh, and only uh, most of the color in the book is is actual watercolors. Where, but once uh, photographic illustrations uh, came of age, so to speak, all that changed, and all of a sudden, even pocket guidebooks had full color illustrations of birds locations, uh, nests, everything. Uh, so th these last three are in that era. And the first one is one that I have marveled at on this channel before. This is National Geographic. This is Birds of the Photo Arc, which was a, a project that uh, the legendary photographer came up with of laying backdrop and, uh, you know, and studio lights and taking in-depth, high-definition, close-up photos 
of as many animals as possible <laughs> as a kind of photo arc under the gloomy assumption that uh, like the the arc in the fable this is how they will survive it won't be that they'll survive as living animals they'll survive through these photos uh, the photo arc is amazing the first book is just all kinds of animals and it's amazing you can you stare at it just mesmerized you look at these pages and my first thought anyway my very first thought and it kept coming back to me over the course of all of these pages is how could anyone have ever thought that these people were any different from us they are the same as us <laughs> uh, and then they decided that photo arc well, the original one was so was so successful that they decided to do one just on birds uh, which is considerably easier than getting an american buffalo into a studio <laughs> this way this way we we just have uh really detailed i wonder if i could show you yeah really really detailed photos right up close of these of these birds just sitting wondering what's going on <laughs> so so that's the next one uh, this, the, this next one in this third category is a specialty item we've also seen it on this channel this is only about one kind of bird but oh what a kind of bird this is the empire of the eagle an illustrated natural history uh this is by yale university press and it it has tons of fantastic photos, uh, but also, as you can see, see there. On the one hand, you've got a high definition photo. On the other hand, you've got uh, a natural history breakdown in great detail, and that just goes on for all the eagles of the world. Uh, just, just fascinating stuff. Fascinating stuff, uh, and a perfect example of what I'm talking about. This is this, this also uh, is a kind of marriage of the second and the third kind of bird books because you're you're marveling at them and also getting to know them. Uh, and then this last one, I think you probably knew this was coming. <laughs> this is this is also National Geographic. It has scarcely left my hand except when I shower, and even then I've been tempted. <laughs> this is this is National Geographic, the splendor of birds. And that's all that this is. It's just for you to marvel. Like all National Geographic books, it has tons and tons of information. But this is mainly meant for you to marvel at birds. Just page after page of, of marveling at birds. <laughs> uh, there's artwork. But the main thing here is the, is the hallmark fantastic illustrations that, that National Geographic is famous for. And that that is going to do it. <laughs> that is the closest I can come to a starter kit for birds. I'll list everything down below, but I, I have to stress that this is not the same thing as uh, most of the other starter kits that we've done. And the next one that we will do, whichever that will be, feel free to fire off suggestions. Uh, but, like, for instance, uh, last week we did Vikings. And with the, with the things I, with the books that I suggested on Vikings, they really were a starter kit. They really were great places for you to start. With birds, though, it's it's a much tougher thing, mainly because it's so much bigger a subject and so much more personal a subject. We take birds personally; humans do. Uh, we eat them in enormous quantities, staggering quantities. But we also marvel at them all the time. Uh, most of us do, anyway. I certainly do every day. Uh, so, really, there's no bad place to start with birds. Even an in-depth scientific study, if your interest is there, it will sustain you. So. This is not the usual kind of starter kit. These are just these are just the books that I wanted to strongly recommend. <laughs> uh, so we'll be back to normal next time when we deal with oh, well, I don't even know <laughs> English literary history. Uh, a starter kit on biography of the ancient world. That's been a big one. Lots of people have been asking that. If we we did a biography starter kit, and a lot of you have been saying that's way way too general. Now it's time to break it down by period, or even by area of interest, and do biographies that way. <laughs> So all of these are possibilities, and they will go back to being normal. Birds can't be normal any more than I think probably dogs could be normal. <laughs> um, anyway, I'll wrap this up for now, but I'll be back. Thank you, Book 2.